Welcome, everybody, to today's very special episode of the I Went Outside Today podcast. I'm one of your three hosts, Chris. This is Cheryl. I'm Sydney. I did the thing. And Sydney did indeed do another thing today. Or it I wasn't guess today. Last week. Yes, it was last week. Last week before our niece's uh, birthday party. Yeah, I did two things in one day. Thanks. Happy sixth birthday, Elizabeth. Happy sixth birthday, little lizard. Woo! But before we had taken part in birthday festivities, Sydney had gone and taken the Crystal Basics Workshop at our local metaphysical store, Where Fairies Live. Where the fairies live. Where fairies live. Whoops. According to their (laughs) Facebook page. So the event uh, we found on Facebook, I think Cheryl found this one. Cheryl's our awesome producer. I should also note at this point we are recording in the, what's the name of the Airbnb here? This podcast brought to you by a church that's dressed up like a house. So uh, the title says, Church Stay Alberta Sleeps Six Religious Building. And the description says, a beautiful former church is the perfect place to kick back and relax. Luxury apartment, the main floor is all yours to enjoy. It's true, and it's absolutely beautiful here. Um, Be sure to check out our Facebook or our Instagram to see photos of our stay here. But not our Twitter. Not our Twitter. We don't have Twitter. Just Um, a quick shout out to our fantastic hosts, Dominic and his wife, Zita. This place is beautiful. Their hospitality has been amazing. There is more food than we could possibly ever eat in the one night we're staying here. It's true. We brought food because we just figured it'd be a normal Airbnb, and they've provided more food than we had even brought. Mm -hmm. Kudos to them for the delicious carrot cake muffins. I'll also give a little preview for people. We will also be recording our future Halloween special here at this very same night and uh, setting that to play in October 31st proper Mm -hmm. halloween proper Mm -hmm. make sure you give a listen to us in october but back to sydney's crystal basics workshop she took at uh, where fairies live i have the description here of the event what to expect are you new to working with crystals or interested in learning more about them come join us for a class that covers all of the basic tips and skills for working with crystals Topics include choosing your crystals, cleansing, charging, and programming your crystals. Programmers out there, hold on. Different ways to work crystals into your practice, so medical practice, I assuming, or law practice. The properties of seven popular crystals. We did spend a lot of time on legal practice of crystals. Uh, Ticket price includes a sample kit to allow you to try some of the cleansing methods covered in the class at home. Keep your crystals clean, kids. A folder with info sheets, a list of trusted books and websites, and a list of trusted online crystal retailers. Don't buy your crystals just from any crystal seller. Yeah. This is an in-person class, so Sydney got to go out and be in-person. And yeah, there's just some more explanation here. COVID safety, masks are preferred. A maximum of six participants in our class space will be socially distanced. So, Sydney, it was you and five other people taking this class? No, someone actually signed up, but they didn't show up. So it was the host and then three other ladies and me. Nice. Nice, small, intimate gathering, just and like how you like host, it. And I didn't know that I knew the host. Who is the host? Do you want to give a shout out to her? Yeah, her name is Megan. Megan. Um, Hi, Megan. I don't like know know her, but I know her through a friend. So I was just like staring at her and I was like, why does this bitch look so familiar? And then she was like, do you know Jen? And then I was like, I do know Jen. And now I know how I know you. So that was crazy serendipity. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jen. What's up, Jen? (laughs) Yeah. And then Jen was like, you have a podcast. And it was like, it's 2022. Everyone has a podcast. (laughs) That's true. What are you doing if you don't have a podcast right now? So yeah, when I learned all about crystals, and I wore my crystal, and I wore it today too. Well done. I don't know what it is. It appears to be a hexagonal shape, so it looks probably a burnt pencil. Yeah, I only like crystal points because they had one in the movie Atlantis. <laughs> the documentary Atlantis by Disney. So I like crystal points because of that. Was there any significance to the crystal point in Atlantis? I have not seen it in many a year. Yeah, they were keys. Oh, what is yours open? Nothing. Well, I don't know. 
that's not exciting at all. Did did they give you that crystal or did you buy that crystal? No, I got this from the Rock and Gem shop because they were going out of business. Oh. Which is the Edmonton Institution. Yes. So I went to support. Nicely done. Yeah. And I also bought a rock that looks like a butterfly and a little rock that looks like an owl. But I gave them away. So with this in-person event, like any other in-person event, I'm going to have to ask, were you on time? Were you on time? (laughs) I was exactly where I needed to be that morning. No, I was late by like four minutes. Ah, four minutes isn't so bad. No. Yeah. Most workshops give like 15 minutes at the start to wait for exactly lollygaggers to lollygag in so i was like normally within five minutes isn't even really actually late no so there yeah bonus points to you I bonus did. points mm-hmm. i got a ride so this took place in the where fairies live store did was there like a meeting room in the back or was yeah. this in the store proper no it's in the back ah, excellent so were you all sitting in like a big round table much like the table it was square okay very much like the table we're at now sort of but like a bunch of these put together because there was like 8 million crystals in the middle, so it required more than one table. So just a big old pile of rocks in the middle? Big old pile of rocks, but not in a pile, laid out nicely. Did you fidget with any while you were there? No, because they were her personal collection, so I didn't touch them. Because crystals is all about like energy and witchcraft, and it's, it's like touching someone's genitals, you should ask first. <laughs> but there was a class, so it wasn't the appropriate time. <laughs> To ask if I could touch the rocks. Some of them had touched genitals. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, but it's like when, when you touch a genital, okay. you should ask first. You just sort of mumbled through that, and I'm like, I don't know if I heard that correctly. No, it's like the same principle. Like crystals are like private. You can't just go touching someone's crystals without crystals asking. Crystals are person's privates. Yep. Okay. You heard it here first. That's why they call them the family jewels. Oh. There you go. That's exactly where that's history. Mm-hmm. You're so smart, Cheryl. <laughs> yeah. Science. Science. But because you do different things with them and it's all about energy. So you can't just touch another man's crystals or another woman's crystals, as it were. Yeah, and it sounds like you were there with mostly women. Yes, it was all ladies. All ladies. No gents allowed. No, I don't know if they were allowed, but they didn't come. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Mm. Men are turds, so that was fine with me. Ah. She's single, boys. Yep. She's Rude. single, boys. Let me try that again. Oh, yeah. No men at the thing. How did they start this workshop? She just, like, started. She just has ADD like me, so I was, like, able to follow along very easily because she didn't talk about anything for too long. So that was really good. Ah, mm-hmm. she spoke to your inner soul. This is the most easiest thing to follow that you've ever sent me to. Nice. Other things are not as good to follow. Hmm. I don't know. Jumping from subject to subject was what the Creationist Museum owner did, and you did not like that at all. But loudly, and he insinuated that I would be a rapist if there weren't laws. <laughs> and that is the first thing he said to me. I mean... We don't really know for sure. He didn't even say welcome. He said if society didn't have any rules, you two would both be rapists. Which just made me think that he would be a rapist. Mm. You left me alone with that guy for three hours. Closer to two. It was was three. three. It was three. Right. It was about two hours, right? About an hour in, I told Cheryl, like, if we don't hear anything in two hours, I'm going to send a text and see mm-hmm. if they need an extraction. Mm-hmm. So anyway, this lady did not insinuate that I would be a rapist if society broke down. She just said, I think you know my friend, Jen. So much warmer reception mm-hmm. than some of the other activities you've sent me to. Sounds a little more chill. A little more chill, yeah. yeah. A lot more chill. Was Did they have, like, uh, new agey music playing in the back? Any ambiance with there was a candle. gentle lighting? Nice. There was a candle. Nice. But yeah, so I mean, basically she just went into like, how do you choose a crystal was the first thing. So how do you choose a crystal? You just choose it. Does it call to you? Does it like start to speaking? some people, I never tried talking to rocks. So. It's like, Sydney, Sydney. No, I just get things that are pointy. Mm. Hey, Sydney, I'm a rock over here. Imagine <laughs> if I misheard and I was like, oh my God, Mr. Rock. I love all your movies. <laughs> how exciting. <laughs> So some people choose on color. You could choose on like zodiacs. I don't know. There was a million things. Take the course if you want to find out how to choose your crystal. So with these crystals in the middle of the table, were you encouraged to choose one 
from before no, you. No, they were hers. They were just like for examples of what because oh. you also did like more science stuff and like told us about structures and things and there was like you could have ghosts inside your crystals. Mm-hmm. So there was, it was for examples. It wasn't for touching or choosing. Okay. Yeah. Good so thing you didn't go to this thing. You'd just be showing up, touching your crystals, choosing them. Like, chill the fuck out. Hey. there's <laughs> not a, your crystals. If it's a problem, there's a crystal that can solve it. I'm sure of it. According to this class. Before going to this class, did you believe in the power of crystals? I'm crystal curious. Hmm. So uh, did they encourage you to go around the store afterwards and... Yeah, they gave me a ten dollar coupon, but I forgot to spend it. Oh no! I had to go back. Was it like a limited time coupon? No, it's it literally says for me for doing the class, ah, so nice. I don't think it expires. Nice. So you're gonna bust in their door and be like, "Give me your blackest crystal." Well, no, I'm gonna buy. Um, Black is the night. I'm gonna buy a selenite bowl with it. What is a selenite bowl? A bowl made of selenite. What, what does it do? So the next thing we talked about is charging. And cleansing your crystals, you have to cleanse it and then you have to charge it. But then if you get a selenite bowl, a selenite anything will cleanse and charge your crystal. So I was like, what the fuck are we even talking about anything else for? If there's this two in one. Mm -hmm. It's like the vibranium of the crystal world. Mm -hmm. Like what are even the other, you know, you light incense and bury it in the earth and do all those other stuff with it. But... So if you need to cleanse a crystal and there's no bowls to be had. You don't need a bowl. You could just put on a slab of selenite. You could put it on a cluster of selenite. But if like there's no selenite to be had, you just light a candle and bury it in your yard? Well, you're going to have to take the class to find out. No, there's lots of different ways, but it depends what you're trying to do too. That's the whole main thing I learned is like the way that you would cleanse your crystal would maybe also depend on if, what, what you're doing. If you're just simply wearing a crystal or having a crystal, then you would do something more chill, like putting it on selenite. If you're doing like a really complicated spell, then you might have to like cleanse it and charge it in a certain way. It'd be less willy-nilly. So you need to cleanse your crystal. How does a crystal become dirty? With bad juju, bad energy, just like bad vibes. And how do they get those bad vibes, though? People touching them. Mm. So then basically, if no one ever touches your crystals, then you don't have to do anything to them? I don't know. Okay. So if a volcano explodes and a crystal lands at your feet, it is just like clean, cleansed and ready to go. Yep. Excellent. But it wouldn't be charged or programmed. It would just be cleansed. Mm. Hmm. So So would it be ready to go? It's not like a can of Chef Boyardee ravioli. And if you don't have selenite on hand, how do you charge a crystal? You could do lots of things to charge a crystal. Sydney starts grabbing for her notes. I'm not grabbing for my notes because I was told that I was a horrible reader. You're very, you're a, you're way better off the cuff. It's just when you're reading, you sound like you're reading. Yeah. You sound like you're reading. <laughs> now I have to read in silence, and it's weird. <laughs> I cut out the silence. You leave it in. I'm the editor. I only put the silence in after every time you tell a joke. What did you ask me? (laughs) What do you want from me right now? How do you charge your... Charge your crystal. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. How do you charge your private's crystal? You're not charging your private. Do you go out during a lightning storm? And throw it in the path of a lightning bolt? I got it. So your analogy to it being like genitals is actually pretty accurate if you can rub it to charge it. Unfortunate, but true. Oh my. It's terrible that I went down this path with this. Sorry, Megan. But you could rub it and you just like charge it. Or you could like, you can't put most rocks in the sun for like science reasons, but you just charge it with the selenite or your hands. Or your sensual hands. <laughs> So that's how you cleanse crystal. That's how you it. charge a crystal. In the description, they also talked about programming your crystal, which I've never heard of before. Yeah, she said that it's like so known in the culture of using crystals that like no books ever talk about it because apparently everyone just assumes that everyone else knows what it is. So she makes a point to talk about it in her class, but pretty much it's just like asking the crystal to help you with your specific intention Mm. so if you're doing like the witchcraft stuff okay so if you're like 
hey, Crystal, I need help building a garage. The Crystal yeah. will figure it out for you. Yeah, then you would just go and get yourself like a garage building crystal and you would ask it. Like, that's the intention. That's programming. So then do specific crystals, are there specific ones for garage building or can yes, you just grab... Yes, absolutely. Okay. Blue lace agate. I'm totally kidding. I have no fucking idea. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't use blue lace agate to build your garage. So how do you ask a crystal? You just ask it. Do you, like, do you hold it up at eye level or do you sort of loom over it while it's on your kitchen table? Yes. Yes to everything above? Yes. All of the above? Okay. You just ask it however you're asking it. You don't witchcraft, you're just a do it how you do it. The one witchcraft spell that I did that's still paying off, mm -hmm. just uh, last month, Cheryl and I were at a Safeway and you know those machines where you put in all of your change and it gives you dollar bills? Yeah. Uh, we were walking out and in the change bin below, there was about $50 worth of loonies and toonies in there. Yeah. Were they fake? No, because they were did they real. Not They're all real. The... We don't know. They're supposed to go in the bowl. Yeah. So you stole from Safeway. Well... Whoever. It was in the change slot. Yeah. Everybody knows what's in the change slot is free game. That's a vending machine law. Yep. I'm telling. Go ahead. I've told. Shout out to Safeway. Yep. I do like Safeway too. They have good bread. So your thing is still paying off? It I sure got to figure out if this is a good money crystal because I entered a contest to win $2,000 worth of Ethereum. Good luck. Yeah, I didn't cleanse it yet. I meant to like do a cleanse before the show to tell you how it was going, but then I forgot. How Didn't were you going to cleanse it? I was going to bury it in um, salt, okay. but then it didn't line up with garbage day. Table Fair. salt? Oh, no, sorry. I was going to do um, like the salt would be in a glass, and then there would be another glass barrier, and then there would be my crystal. But you have to throw the salt away after you do it, and I missed food scraps day, so I couldn't throw the salt away, so I didn't do it because mm. then I would just have negative salt in my house. For like a week and that's bad or two weeks because <clears throat> the food scraps is only every other week mm -hmm. do they explain what's happening with the salt because salt is also a crystal yeah but it's like the hoover of crystals and it just hoovers up all the bad vibes so yeah. if you took that salt and you made something for somebody with the bad salt would they then be cursed yeah i'm pretty sure that's called hexing someone cheryl okay God damn. just check it Gee, what are you going to get up to later? <laughs> I don't know. If got you, some ideas. If you got that solenite ball. Oh, it wasn't bowl, table salt. Sorry, it was dead sea salt. But could, you, yeah. Could you, you just pour the salt in the solenite bowl and then it would be cleansed and charged and then you have cleansed charged salt? <laughs> I don't know. I have to ask. I don't know all the rules. I don't mm. remember all the rules. No one asked that. Could you use sugar? I think the point is that you're trying to get rid of it right it's like more you get rid of the negative energy so you don't want to reuse negative energy so where does all negative energy go into the salt which then goes into the landfill yeah that's bad for the environment well sorry <laughs> that's probably why it kills plants mm -hmm. so yeah that's cleansing you got me all messed up about this i don't know about the salt if it wasn't late we could call her but i don't think we could call her you should ask her about table sugar, too, because sugar is also a crystal. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's the same. What about crystal meth? <laughs> no. No. It's that already a bad Drano crystal. That in it. That's not real crystals. <laughs> so the next one was about working crystals into your practice. What kind of practice are we talking about? I gotta read this note about this. It says discard the salt after. I don't think you can reuse the salt. I don't think that you could just put salt in a bowl and recharge it. I think that's cheating. I don't know. Salt's a crystal. I took high school science. It's true. I looked at them it's under like a microscope. It's a special crystal, though. They're square crystals. Well, I don't, there's, I don't think you do any, like, real... I don't know. Although, if you cleanse... Because don't you need to add water to the bowl when you're cleansing the crystal? No. Oh, Okay. Well, then never mind. And you should be very careful about what you add water to. She was very good about, like, knowing the science and makeup of all the rocks mm -hmm. and, like, saying what's safe to touch water and, like, salt and other things and ways around it. Mm -hmm. So you keep your rocks in good condition. Also, did you know that quartz is just, like, everything? It's wild. So we're quartz? 
Well, not us, but like lots of rocks that are like it's just all quartz. Not all of the rocks are quartz, but many of the rocks are quartz. And it has very strange properties. So what practices are she talking about using your crystals in? Just witchcraft stuff and like meditation stuff and just anything you could practice. You could just use crystals. Like law? Tennis? Yep. Singing? Yep. Mm. Swimming? Yep. Mm. Mm. Baking with crystals, though, does sound like a bad idea. No, you shouldn't do any food stuff with crystals okay. because crystals are microporous, so you can't fully sanitize them. Okay. But we bake with salt. Can't sanitize it. Yeah. That's what the class said. Did you know you also can't really burn salt? It doesn't burn? I knew that because I knew everything. So, but thank you. So the next thing on the workshop list here is they list the properties of seven popular crystals. Yeah. Do you recall what the properties were? Mm-hmm. From your notes? Please tell us. Mm-hmm. Tell us, Sydney. It's too much to say. There's just so much. This was a three-hour class, by the way. Do you remember the seven popular crystals they're going to discuss? Yes. Quartz was probably one of them. Quartz was one of them. I don't have anything in my hands. I remembered all of this from memory, from my mind. Clear, okay. So clear quartz was one. There's many subtypes of other quartz. I don't even know if it's a subtype, but there's other types of quartz. And then selenite, we already talked about. That's the vibranium of the crystal world that just charges and cleanses and it never runs out. And then blue lace agate was another one. And then rainbow moon sun was another one. <laughs> Did she have any examples of these on hand for you to take a look at? Yeah, I looked at a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. I looked at examples of all of these and different kinds of them and different colors and Very stuff. Very cool. Yeah, a lot of it was just like looking at crystals. So I can't really translate that to the podcast experience. And then red jasper was also another one. And citron and amethyst. Mm, lemon flavored. Yeah. Citron, I think, was like really good for money. Oh, so you're like probably going to get one of them. Yeah, but I'd probably just get amethyst because I like purple. What is amethyst good for? Oh, just so many things. <laughs> it's good for protection. Will it get stains out of a rug? Yep. Excellent. Because it's good for protection, so it will protect your rug so that you will never even get stains in it if that's what you program yeah. it to do. How does it protect you? What does it protect you from? Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> just whatever you need to be protected from. So if you accidentally eat some poison food, if you swallowed an amethyst, it would protect you. Mm -hmm. No, I'm kidding. She was actually very like chill about like don't use crystals instead of medicine was kind of one of her major points. Good call. Yeah, I, was, I thought that was good advice. So mm -hmm. if you have a home invasion, encasing you yourself in amethyst, you'll be protected. If you could do it in time. Is amethyst bulletproof? I don't think so. If it was thick enough. I just said home invasion. Some robbers don't bring a gun. I, I, it depends how much amethyst. The width, I think, is going to matter a lot to answer your question. So it might not be good at protection, is what you're trying to say. No, it just depends. And if you programmed it right and everything. So when I was younger, I was really into crystal properties. Um, so, Sydney, what do you know about your birthstone? Everything. Everything? Okay. So. Uh, Diamonds are used for everything. <laughs> Diamonds are the strongest rock in the whole world, and they can cut glass, and they use them in technology, I think. Yes, they do use them in technology. They're also a lady's best friend. <laughs> well, debatable. So, according to... This website I found on Google, charmsoflight.com. Uh, diamonds purify and detoxify all the body's systems, rebalancing the metabolism and building up stamina. Stamina. Blech. Yep, sure do. They treat allergies and chronic conditions. They can also help with glaucoma and clears your eyesight. Diamonds can effectively treat dizziness and vertigo and benefits the brain. It also counteracts poisoning. She was very clear that if you're sick, you should go to the doctor and that she's not going to recommend rocks if you have heart problems. It's true. The doctor's got way better crystals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to get us flagged on Spotify for misinformation. <laughs> I don't. I'm just reading what's on somebody else's website. It's cool. I mean, in reality, and this is just a PSA for everyone, do not get your medical advice from a podcast. Go to see a person. That is correct. 
go to see a medical professional. I get all of my medical advice from podcasts. Find the most boring person in the most boring doctor clothes you can find. He's going to tell you the truth. Chris, your birthstone is the ruby. The ruby. Yeah, I know because I fucking bought one and they're expensive. The bloodstone. It encourages joy, spontaneity, laughter, and courage. It promotes positive dreams and stimulates the pineal gland. I do all those things. <laughs> it encourages your brother to be a turd person. <laughs> we train. I'm trying to spark joy. Are you? Yep. Settle down, Marie Kondo. It aids in retaining wealth and passion. The ruby encourages the removal of negative energies from your path. It overcomes exhaustion and lethargy and promotes potency and vigor. And it calms hyperactivity. Mm-hmm. So if I'm have the ruby and i'm removing negative energy in my path i don't need a solenite bowl i yeah, just you need, still need it i just need to walk towards things and then the negative energy has gone that's just your burst on though you're not a ruby i mean what if i was and wearing also she said there's a lot of misinformation on the internet so i have a very handy trusted list of trusted books that tell the truth <laughs> so that could be nonsense for all we know <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> I feel like a lot of this is nonsense, but it used to be something I really enjoyed when I was younger. So for me, I have uh, the August birthstone, so Pyridot. So it strengthens the immune system, metabolism, and benefits the skin. It aids in disorders of the heart, thymus, lungs, gallbladder, spleen, and intestinal tract. It treats ulcers and strengthens eyes. It balances bipolar disorders and overcomes hypochondria. I noticed you weren't bipolar. Mm-hmm. And you have very strong eyes. Mm-hmm. Again, this is not anything that her class promoted. I <laughs> so, just want to be so clear. Yes, it is not anything she her class promoted. Uh, fun fact, if my birthstone actually had any of these medicinal properties, I wouldn't have asthma because it's supposed to treat lung disorders. Awkward. Yeah, mm. but so... Also, like, you had, you would have to have one. Like, do you have Peridot on you? Uh, yeah, I'm wearing an earring. Oh, well, shit. Yep. Maybe it's fake. It probably is. <laughs> That's how you tell the authenticity of a gem. I mean, it's funny because, like, uh, at least with my birthstone, uh, in doing, like, some of the history stuff with it, they used to believe that you could crush up Pyridot and put it in a drink and drink it, and it would cure asthma. She does not recommend No, doing do not drink crystals. That. Like, a lot of people will do crystal charge water, and she said... Don't put your crystals in the water because they're dirty and you can't sanitize them. So if you want to do that, glass is like basically a conductor of energy. So there's like water bottles Mm. that have like a glass thing and then you screw it in and then the water touches the glass, but it doesn't touch the crystals. It's interesting that she is dissuading people from not ingesting gems because traditionally in like ancient cultures, mashing up gems Mm -hmm. and mixing with various other liquids were cures for diseases yeah they're dirty though and we know that now yes what if you clean it like we used to do lots of stuff in the olden days that's not good for you like we literally we didn't have proper sewage before there's like you can see in like maps of london like when they started having proper sanitation and removing the sewage and like people stop fucking dying at like such high rates Mm. so i don't think we used to do it is like a good Mm. the crappiest way to die but yeah like crystals do have a really really long history of being used in many cultures in different ways for mysticism and and medical Mm -hmm. reasons like a chakra and all that are there any crystals that she talked about that could tell the future no Mm. She talked a lot about citrine, which is a good money one. And I mean, she got a bunch of people to come to her class, so she might be onto something. <laughs> <laughs> if the walls were just paved with citrine. Yeah. <laughs> so that looks like it was the end of the syllabus. Um, but it said the ticket price includes a sample kit to allow you to try some of the cleansing methods covered in the class at home. Yeah, so I got the sample kit, but I didn't cleanse them yet. I didn't try any cleansing yet because I'm not responsible. So you got solanite? No, I have to buy the solanite. Would you, Selenite. What kind of cleansing kit did you get? I got the salt, the Dead Sea salt, and uh, rice and some other stuff. I rice? I don't remember. Like grocery store rice? 
Well, it's like brown rice. You could use it in place of whenever soil is unsafe for your crystals. Because some, some stuff you shouldn't bury in dirt. Because it's not good for the rock. So in place of that as an earth element, you could use rice. Because rice is from the earth. I just do the all-in-one though. I just got the selenite bowl. Like what was even... What are even the rest of the options for? Oh, mm-hmm. you do smoke too. Incense. Hmm. I got incense in my kit. But I have a really small place and a really sensitive smoke detector. And the smoke detector is really fucking loud. And it flashes and it yells at you. And it just gives me PTSD. So, Did you figure out what your favorite crystal was at the end of the class? No. I think maybe quartz because I like smoky quartz. But when she asked us what our favorite crystal was, I didn't want to commit to saying smoky quartz. So I just said I didn't know. And oh, and there is like even other stuff about like feng shui and stuff too. Mm-hmm. Yep. How to feng shui your crystals in your home? Yep. Have you enacted this in your own home life? No. And since this was a beginner class, would you say this is a good beginner class, or was this like over your head, or was it just the right amount of information? No, this was a good beginner class because everything was like more in depth than I'm saying. And if they ha- were to schedule an intermediary class, do you think you would take it at this point? Absolutely. I'm going to get rich, bitches. Going to do a money spell. Maybe I should do a spell to like find that fucking Bune pendant. Mm-hmm. It's gone, people. <laughs> Sydney lost it. It left. <laughs> I knew where I put it. It's gone. Right. Well, I think that takes us to the end of the workshop. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did want to pit Cheryl and Sydney in a short quiz against each other on crystals. That's why you wanted my notes. What? No. I didn't even know Chris was going to do this. And this is from the internet, which has been previously discussed discussed might be a poor source of information, but Mm -hmm. we'll see. I am going to tell you the property of a crystal or the name of a crystal. And you have to guess what the name of the crystal or property is. And these are from amanasir.ca, gemstones and their meanings. So what properties does soda light have? That's a beverage. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. That's Sydney's answer, Cheryl. I'm going to guess clearing negativity. That's such a Mm. Kava answer. Both of you are not correct. Uh, the properties are communication, self-expression, and truth. Hmm. Stupid. <laughs> You're the ones who thought it was drinkable. <laughs> Here's the second one. We'll do about eight of these. What gemstone has the properties of awareness, amplifying energy, and clarity? Sydney's looking at her notes. I'm not. <laughs> Quartz. Topaz. Surprisingly, Sydney has got it correct. Nice. Yay. So for this next one. What do you mean surprisingly? <laughs> I went to a class. You paid for it. <laughs> I studied rocks for three hours. You're a surprise. <laughs> Whatever. Right, so Sydney is a, has a one point lead here, but Cheryl could easily make it up in this next one. Maybe. If you know what the properties of aventurine a V E N T U R I N E. This wasn't in my class. I'm going to say it's good for energy. What kind of energy? Good energy. <laughs> <laughs> to what purpose? Good. I'm going to say it promotes creativity and good dreams. Hmm. The properties listed here are prosperity well-being and good luck sydney just said said good good but i'll let cheryl decide if sydney gets that point why not okay i'm doing it i'm winning she paid attention Mm. all right here's a fancy one snowflake obsidian what are the properties of snowflake obsidian this is good for cleansing bad juju it, it attracts Canadians and blizzards and various other snow-type events. Ooh, sounds exciting. Mm-hmm. Both of you are incorrect. It promotes spiritual protection, transmutation. 
Ooh, and acceptance. Okay. So for number five, can you tell me what Amazonite does? That brings your purchase to you in 24 hours or less, but only if you can get Prime Amazonite. Hmm. Sponsor us, Jeff Bezos. Mm-hmm. It promotes feminine energy and attracts birds. Hmm. So the properties are confidence, mm-hmm. self-love, and creative expression. That's wrong. <laughs> Rose quartz is for self-love, and everybody knows that. There could be like more than one that does the same thing. I don't think so. I mean, I just took a class, but whatever. According to this chart, Rose Quartz does unconditional love, but not self-love. It does all kinds of love. <laughs> I mean, it there's no con- there's no conditions on it. But Amazonite specializes in self-love. Number six, Tiger's Eye. It attracts tigers. It's the eye of the tiger. And it gives you the will of the fight. Promotes psychic ability and... Bitch, should you study? Hmm? Did you study no. for this? No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I told you, I haven't got a single one right. Oh, I thought you got one. No. No. Nope. Not yet. I'm winning. Yep. Um, I'm making some of them up. Quite frankly, the snowflake one was completely ridiculous because I was like, I'm not going to win. So, I said, uh, so yeah, I'm going to say Tiger's Eye promotes psychic ability and courage. I'm going to have to give you both a point for this. Hmm. Tiger's Eye has willpower, warrior spirit, and self-motivation. Nice. I say courage fits that. And also the... The will will of the fight. The will of the fight. The William of the fight. Here's a fun one. Carnelian or Carnelian. Attracts lizards and psychic ability and money. If you think about the words here or how it's spelled... We don't know how it's spelled. You read it to us. C-A-R-N-E-L-I-A-N. Go for cars. Attracts carnivorous plants. I'm sorry. Neither of you get it. Uh, Carnelian or carnal Ian promotes passion, sexual energy, and creativity. Hmm. Not with a thousand guesses. It's a carnal stone. Not with a thousand guesses. Would I get that? Oh, here's an exciting one. So we'll end things off with leopard skin jasper. It's good for motivation and protection from leopards. Promotes masculine energy and connection with the forest. I'm going to have to give this one to Cheryl. The features of the stone are adaptability, shamanic journeys, which is why I'm giving it to Cheryl, and animal magic. Hmm. And that's magic spelled with a CK. I don't know the difference between CK magic and C magic. That's just how they spelt it. I'm not sure what they mean. Mm. Well, you brought it up, mm. so I was like, what does he know that I don't know? But Sydney won this by mm. one point. Mm. I crushed you. Pretty sure one point. I did. I wasn't even keeping score. This brings us to the end of the Crystal Basics episode. You didn't ask me if I would recommend it to a friend. Sydney, would yes. you recommend this to a friend? Yes, I would recommend this to a friend. Well... On that note, that brings us to the end of today's episode. This is one of your hosts, Chris, signing off. This is Cheryl. I'm Sydney out of the thing. Thanks for listening to this very special episode of I Went Outside Today. If you have comments, compliments, or just suggestions of what Sydney should take part in, send them to us on our I Went Outside Today Facebook page or by email to I Went Outside Today Pod at gmail.com. Also, if you could give us a positive rating and review wherever you listen to your podcast and share us with your friends. We would really appreciate you helping our small podcast become a little bigger.